Hello, and welcome to our next installment of the SASCOG Research Interview Series. And it is my pleasure to have Dr. Catherine Mealy today as my guest. Um, and so, Dr. Mealy, if you could just start off by introducing yourself, um, tell us where you're from and your current position and anything we should know about you. Sure. Thanks so much, Dr. Young. Um, so I'm Kate Mealy. Um, I am currently a medical officer at the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, or CDC. I am also an obstetrician gynecologist. I'm a generalist by training, and I did my residency at the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill. And I'm also uh, adjunct faculty at Emory University in the Department of Gynecology and Obstetrics, which is how Dr. Young and I know each other. Awesome. Um, so I thought it would be wonderful to interview you for many reasons, but one reason is that I think that you have a little bit of a different type of job and day to day um, than what a lot of our membership have, you know, as a specialist, uh, academic specialist in general, OBGYN. So maybe you could just walk us through a day in your life or a week in your life, give a flavor for some of the type of work that you do, the projects that you work on and sort of what your role in them is. Absolutely. So I work Monday through Friday, kind of usual work hours, nine to five-ish, uh, about 40 hours a week. I'm a full-time government employee, um, which is fundamentally very different from most of my friends uh, who are obstetrician gynecologists. Um, so we'll start there. Um, and so what I do in those 40 hours a week that I work with CDC is I help folks at CDC to think about things um, with both our patients and my fellow clinicians in mind. So what do our patients need? What are their problem points? What are the real challenges that they face? I think sometimes, you know, we say, well, people aren't getting into prenatal care early enough, for example, but that is just a teeny symptom of a much bigger problem. What is it? What are those reasons why patients are not seeking prenatal care? Um, and then from a clinician perspective, what are the pressure points for us? What are the areas in which guidelines are confusing? Um, something that I think about a lot is syphilis. And syphilis guidelines are really hard to follow. And so I help us think about what are the areas that we can clarify and how can we communicate those changes and updates to practicing clinicians in the field? Um, and then I also deliver babies. Um, so on the side, I, as I mentioned, I'm Emory faculty. And so I have the opportunity to work with residents and fellows and medical students at Grady Hospital. And I also um, work with residents and resident continuity clinic. Uh, and then um, I deliver babies at another practice um, in Atlanta as well, kind of on overnight shifts usually. So that's your non nine to five. That's my non nine to five. So I, I always tell people whenever they're worried about me working too much, my, you know, my, my public health friends, I say, look, my quality of life is still way better than all of my friends who are full-time academic generalist obstetrician gynecologists. So, and then they feel really badly for all y'all. Yeah. <laughs> so tell us a little bit about your journey to the position that you're in now. How does one become a CDC researcher or how did you become one? Sure. So I am what the medical school admissions folks call a non-traditional person. Um, and what that means is that when I started medical school, I was just a lot older than all of my peers. Um, so I had worked for about seven years doing nonprofit management, mostly based in New York City, but I had the opportunity to work in many places abroad uh, and to really think about and understand the nuances of the nonprofit world and also public health which was really helpful and has continued to inform my day-to-day -day work. And then I went to medical school um, and then to residency at UNC, as I mentioned. And then when I was nearing graduation, several of my attendings kept sending me these emails about this thing called the Gilstrap Fellowship. And they, they said that, you know, they thought that I would be perfect for it. So I did my due diligence um, and I you know, read up on the Gilstrap Fellowship and, and what it is is it's a great opportunity specifically for obstetrician gynecologists who are within seven, who are within eight years of graduation to come and join us at CDC for a fellowship. And so you are a full-time employee of the CDC Foundation. In your day-to-day -day work, you work with the Division of STD Prevention, 
the Division of Reproductive Health, or the Division of Birth Defects and Infant Disorders. Um, and it kind of depends on what projects need certain subject matter expertise at the time, what the opportunities are, and also what the interest is of each fellow. So when I um, ultimately landed at CDC as a Gilstrap Fellow, I was really interested in syphilis, um, and I ended up with the Division of STD Prevention, which was a really great fit for me and changed the trajectory of my entire career. Uh, so the fellowship is one or two years, and it's just a great way for people to get their foot in the door in public health. And then our fellows have gone on to do lots of things. So I stayed on at CDC um, as a full-time employee. We have other fellows who've gone into private practice. We have some who've gone into academic medicine. Uh, one of our current fellows matched into maternal fetal medicine, and we'll be starting there in July. Um, so, you know, there's lots of different opportunities for growth um, once you kind of learn the ropes of what it means to be a CDC OBGYN through this fellowship program. That's awesome. Are there any other fellowships or opportunities or other ways for people maybe at different points in their career who are interested in working for the CDC? Yeah, absolutely. So CDC has something called the Epidemic Intelligence Service or EIS, and that's really um our premier fellowship program. Um, the Gilster Fellowship is nice for OBGYNs in particular because it's a little bit more flexible with the needs of our clinical work. Um, because as OBs, you know, we, especially generalists, you know, we work in the OR, we work on labor and delivery, we work in clinic, and, and that it can be hard to maintain that clinical schedule doing EIS. That said, I know OBGYNs who have done it and they have done great work and been really successful. Um, and so that is a fellowship that allows you to really learn the nitty gritty of epidemiology and how to do disease outbreaks and things like that. It's And it's fabulous. So that's a great um, program. I will say for anyone who's interested in it, you have to apply really, really early. So if you're thinking about it and you're currently a resident, um, you should start looking into it even your, by the end of your second year of residency because it takes a long time to get your application going and you have to submit it really early, even before your peers who are applying into clinical fellowships. Um, and then for folks who are maybe listening to this who have not yet pursued a BGYN residency, um, there are other opportunities kind of either from undergrad or from medical school to um, get in with the CDC. So one of them is called an ORISE fellowship and it's spelled O-R-I-S-E. Um, and that's a great way for people who are interested in public health to learn more about CDC and meet and network folks to figure out if that's the right career path. Awesome. And then I guess lastly, I would just ask for people maybe who are more established in their career and, and academic as an academic generalist um, who maybe are interested in more project type work or collaborating with a colleague at CDC are there. Do you have any advice or suggestions, opportunities for that type of work? Absolutely. So I will tell a story of one of my colleagues, um, Lisa Ollier, who is a phenomenal maternal fetal medicine specialist out of Texas um, and a former president of ACOG. And she decided um, that she wanted to come work for CDC. And so now she is working for us full time and made that transition at a totally different place in her career than I did. Um, so I think that if you're interested in public health and interested in CDC, there is you know, never a wrong time in your career to make that transition. If you're interested in working with us in a kind of a smaller way on a project basis, like you mentioned, Dr. Young, um, you can certainly do th so in a couple of different ways. So one is to become a guest researcher, which allows you to work with us and have access to our confidential data and, and really contribute subject matter expertise with that critical obstetrician gynecologist lens on a variety of issues. A lot of our opportunities are particularly in the spaces of maternal morbidity and mortality, um, but be really kind of there is a lack of OBs at CDC and we need help. Um, and so I, I can only go to so many meetings and respond to so many emails. Um, and then the other opportunity is to become a contractor, which is something that you can do by only working a certain specified number of hours per week. And then there's something called an IPA, which allows you to be kind of an official CDC person for a couple of hours a week and to share your job salary with your home institution. Um, and there's a special arrangement so that you don't lose your benefits and things like that, but you can work with CD on, CDC on specific projects. Wonderful. Well, I really appreciate it. I think this was a great um, overview and thank you for talking about your career and a little bit about your pathway and opportunities at CDC. I think that this is great for our membership. Um, so thank you for your time, Dr. Amelia. It's always a pleasure.
Always a pleasure to talk with you, Dr. Young. And if folks have questions, you're welcome to reach out to me directly. My email address is very easy because it is pph9 at cdc.gov. So I always remember it as postpartum hemorrhage nine at cdc.gov. So I'd be happy to answer questions or to connect others with, with great people at CDC. Thanks so much. You're welcome.